I'm Fiona Barber, Mark McDonald's Global Practice Leader for Water Resources and Flooding. I think we need to talk about the increasing flood risk people are facing due to climate change. Climate change is an increasing threat to our population. Currently, five million people are at risk from flooding from our rivers and coasts. That's only going to increase in years to come. The sea level is going to rise by 80 centimetres up to a metre. And not only that, the surge intensity is going to go up, creating more damages from flooding due to climate change. Summer rainfall is predicted to become more intense, which is going to have a particular impact in our urban environments, where the overwhelming of sewer systems is going to be more frequent and more damaging in years to come. Building higher walls and bigger sewers is just not sustainable. It's incredibly costly to build and also to maintain. Where there isn't a business case for providing flood defences, we have to increase the resilience of these communities for them to be able to withstand flooding and recover quickly from these flood events. How do we do this? A counterintuitive approach is to encourage redevelopment in flood-prone land. This is where new or upgraded infrastructure can effectively provide a flood protection role. Interlinked with this is designing for exceedance, where we have to accept that we cannot protect against all flooding. New or upgraded public spaces can be used to reroute floodwaters away from properties and also temporarily store floodwaters. In extreme weather, I think people accept flood water in the streets as long as it's not in their living rooms and that the critical infrastructure continues to function during the flood event. This calls for a more pragmatic design approach where we reassess what is acceptable flood risk. Efforts to create flood resilient developments are often blocked by planning policies that don't allow for this risk-based approach. The policy simply says no to development in floodplains. While there is general consensus that we should not be allowing developments in greenfield floodplains, I believe that we should be taking a different approach when the floodplain is already developed. For a start, unlocking development on flood-prone brownfield sites will ease the pressure of development on greenfield sites everywhere. Regenerating waterfronts and townscapes can create employment, boost tourism, and enhance the environment. In addition, it can provide the confidence required to attract further investment in existing assets and properties. If communities in areas that are high risk of flooding are denied these redevelopment opportunities, they will see their job prospects fall and their house prices diminish and the insurance costs escalate. They don't just become less resilient to flooding in the future. They miss out on economic and social benefits, leading to stagnation, if not decline. Encouraging resilient design is an affordable, achievable and sustainable way to make communities less vulnerable to the impacts of climate change. I believe it will also create more prosperous, happier and healthier places for us to live and work.